Here's a photo of a prothonotary warbler that I shot recently, and I should have rejected and deleted this image so that nobody ever saw it again. However, I decided to keep it, and here's the final edit. So why did I decide to keep this image that I thought I should have deleted from the beginning? Well, for me, this is a lifer, or in other words, this is the first time that I photographed this species, and I wanted to keep this image as a keepsake for my own personal use. And of course, to show you how to edit in Lightroom to save images that you think are destined for the trash can. Because if we look at the process up to the final edit, and if I zoom in here, actually I need to go up here and hit 400%, we can see that the warbler is out of focus. There's not a lot of detail, so it's not very sharp. So how did I go from that to a sharper image. Actually, that's too much now, so let's go back to 100%. But you can definitely see that the warbler now is sharper, it has more detail, and it's a keeper, at least for myself. It's not something that I'm going to try and get prints from, or to sell, or any other reason, but to keep it for myself, to add it to my list of warblers that I've photographed. So I'm gonna show you how I went from this to this. So let's go ahead and get started by jumping into the develop module. And I'm going to start off by cropping the image by pressing the letter R. And I'm going to crop in real tight. So I just want to keep some of the elements of this branch as part of the composition and to help with the context of where this image was captured or created. All right, so now that we have a better composition, what I like to do is I like to start with my tonal values here to begin shaping the light to make my subject stand out and become the star of the show. And I like to start my editing by reviewing the histogram first to see where I can improve the image by adjusting the tonal values in the image. So the histogram is showing us that there's a lot of detail from left to right or blacks to whites. However, there is a little bit of a gap in the blacks and a little bit of a gap in the white. So we may wanna fill in those gaps to maximize the amount of detail in the entire tonal range. So what I've taught and what others have taught is to hold down your Alt or Option key and to adjust the blacks to the left. You're gonna get this white screen. And then once you see those little specks, that's where you want to stop your adjustment because you're going to begin clipping data if you go any further. The same with the whites, Alt or Option and slide it to the right until you see those little specks, and then you know you're not over editing. However, for this particular image, I've over edited the image, at least in my opinion. It's too bright in the whites and the highlights, and it's too dark in the blacks and the shadows, and there's way too much contrast. Now that may be partly due to some of the other edits that I've applied during import. One of those being an S curve. So I may want to reset the tone curve to eliminate some of that contrast. However, I prefer an S curve over some of the other adjustments that you can do in the tonal section. So I'm gonna go ahead and lower the blacks down to around minus 10 to 12 and plus 10 to 12 on the white. So let's just go with 12 for each. So you can see how that dramatically reduced the amount of contrast, but not so much so that the image is flat. So sometimes you have to take what you learn and apply it to your images. And if it's not giving you the results you want, go ahead and tweak those settings until you get the results you want. So the next thing I wanna do is I wanna tone down the overall brightness of the image because it's a little bit too bright. Now, instinctively, we may want to adjust the exposure to do that, which you can. However, for this particular image, I'm finding that the highlights and the whites are too bright. The shadows and the blacks are okay. So I'm gonna adjust the highlights down to around minus 80 to minus 90. So let's split the difference and go right in between. So that's gonna darken up those highlights and bring back some detail in them as well. All right, so at this point, what we've done so far and what we're going to continue doing is shaping the light in order to make our image look better and in this case, I wanna make my prothonotary warbler look its best. So I want it to stand out from the rest of the scene so that our eyes 
naturally gravitate to the warbler more so than anything else. Right now, the background is really dominating this image because of how bright it is. So we're going to fix that in a minute. I just want to show you some of the other edits that I did for my global adjustments, which all of these are. So again, I have my tone curve that I did during import. I applied a vignette during import as well. And then I also applied my lens corrections during import as well. Okay, so that was pretty much it for my global edits. Next, what I want to do is I want to target my subject and my background separately with my masks in order to do what is known as dodging and burning or making part of the image darker and parts of it brighter. And that's going to help that warbler stand out even more. So we're going to start off with the background for this particular image. It doesn't really matter if you do the subject first or the background first, but I'd like to do the background for this particular image first because I know that the background is dominating our viewer's attention at this point. So it's also selecting parts of the branch here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on subtract with brush. Let's go ahead and collapse this. And then I'm just going to paint in this area to remove the mask from this area because I don't want my edits being applied in that area. Now for this part of the branch, I'm going to leave it because I don't mind making this part of the branch darker because that's going to add a little bit of depth overall once we apply our adjustment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust my exposure down to around minus one stop. So one stop darker. So right there, that alone, if we take a look at the before and the after, you can see how that warbler is now dominating more of the scene versus the background or it's standing out more so than it was before. Now I could definitely go darker and make it even more dramatic. So maybe I want to do that. Maybe I don't. The one thing you want to be aware of if you are going to go darker is you want to make sure that you don't have this right here along the edge of the branch. So let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit more here. I'm going to do 300%. And you can kind of see there's like a little bit of a glow right here. So that is a common mistake that I see in images posted in social media. And that's because the mask didn't completely cover this part. And that's a dead giveaway that the image has been edited. So if I press the letter O, we can see where that mask is being applied. So I may want to add or remove from it. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it like that for now because I'm only going to adjust the exposure to minus one stop darker. All right, so now we're going to create a mask for our subject and Lightroom is selecting the branch as part of the subject. So for this particular image, I'm okay with that because the edits that I'm going to apply is going to add some depth to the branch as well as the warbler. And it's going to add a little bit of life to the overall image by adding that depth. Now we did include parts of the background here. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract that part of the mask because I don't want to include the background in this edit. So I'm going to go ahead and click subtract and select my brush and then just paint over the area to remove it a little bit up here too. I'm not going to go perfect on this. You get the idea but I would spend a little bit more time on refining this mask. So I'm going to go ahead and start off by darkening up the highlights and increasing the brightness of the shadows so I can add a little bit of depth to the tonal values of the subject. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and skip all of this until I get to presence because I want to apply texture clarity and dehaze. And what they are going to do is add contrast along the edges of the detail slightly differently from each other and that's going to give the appearance of the image being sharper and add depth. So let's see how this works. Well, I'm just going to adjust the texture and clarity to right around 15 or so. And then dehaze is a little bit more aggressive. And you can see as I increase dehaze, we're adding a lot of contrast. So I don't want to go that far, but I may want to go right around 15 to 20. So here's the before and after. So take note of the warbler's breast and the edges of the branch here as I turn it on and off. You can see how it's added contrast and shaped the light around our subjects to add that depth. All right, so that's it for our masking edits and our global edits. The next thing we need to do is sharpen the image and remove any digital noise. So let's take a look a little bit closer here. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in to 300 percent. 
and we can see there's a little bit of digital noise. I'm gonna press the letter I twice to show the metadata here, and I shot this at an ISO of 800. So not a whole lot of noise, but it is definitely soft, and we can improve it by sharpening it, hopefully. So let's see if we can do that with Denoise AI. And if we take a look at the before and after, we can definitely see that that noise is gone. So click, hold to show the before, release to see the after. Now we did a good job of removing the noise, or at least Lightroom did, but it didn't sharpen the image. Now sometimes it will make the image sharper and make those details a lot more prominent and sharper with raw details, which is selected by default. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. In this case, it doesn't. So let's go ahead and lower the amount to see if that fixes it, because sometimes when you're too aggressive with the noise, that will smooth out the details and make the image soft as well. But as you can see, that doesn't fix it either. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this up to right around 80, and I'm going to go ahead and enhance it so we can compare it to my final edit. All right, now let's compare this new file that Lightroom created with the noise reduction. And I'm gonna select my final edit, press the letter C to show them side by side. And this is the DNG file on the left side. So DNG and my final edit is a TIFF file. And that's not the reason for it being sharper, which you can definitely see it is sharper and has more detail versus Lightroom's version. And that's because I used a third party app in order to get this final edit. And that's because Lightroom, although I love it, isn't perfect and isn't always going to give us the results that we want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click, go up to edit and select Topaz Photo AI. I'm going to select TIFF and let's see how this works in Topaz Photo AI. Now, if you've never used Topaz Photo AI, it is an app that you can use in conjunction with Lightroom and you can get a free trial to try it out for yourself and you can find that free trial link in the description below. So check this out. Once you bring an image into Topaz Photo AI, it's going to auto magically begin editing the image to make it better. So we have the original on the left with a lot of digital noise and it's soft. On the right, we have the digital noise being completely removed and it's a teeny tiny bit sharper. Now, before we apply the full sharpening on this image, which is going to blow your mind, you're not gonna believe how much sharpening improves your images in Topaz Photo AI. Let's first take a look down here with upscale because what Topaz Photo AI is doing for this particular image is it's upscaling the file 12X in terms of resolution. How is that possible? Well, let's take a look right here. This is the original size of the file. 1221 for the width, 814 for the height. That is less than one megapixels. That's teeny tiny. And that's because of that extreme crop that I had to do to get the composition that I wanted. So what Topaz Photo AI is doing automatically is it's selecting three and a half X for the enlargement of the width and the pixel, which gives us 4236 by 2824. And we can also select one of these other options. Max would be 6X. Now, even though it says 3.5X larger for the width and the height, that actually comes out to 12 megapixels for the resolution. Compared to one megapixel, it's 12 times larger in terms of resolution. So that alone begins improving the image by adding more resolution and more pixels to the image. But check this out. I'm going to go ahead and turn on sharpening and we're going to get something that we can't do in Lightroom. So watch this. Boom. Look at that. Look how much sharper that image is compared to the original. And we couldn't get that with the denoise AI and raw details in Lightroom directly. Now, remember, we are at three and a half times larger in terms of width and height, which would give us an equivalent of 300% zoom. I typically do not go beyond 100% zoom at the full resolution. So in terms of zoom level, 50% would be equivalent and we can definitely see we have a lot of detail in the warbler and it's a lot sharper than it was before. 
And of course, the reason why I don't go beyond 100% is because you will definitely find imperfections in an image as you zoom in more and more. To learn more about Topaz Photo AI and how you can use it to improve and save your images, check out this Topaz Photo AI playlist.